Hello everyone, good morning or good evening, whichever time zone it is for you. So you know all about Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, even Sendai, right? Those are all the big cities in Japan. But I want to talk about why living in the Inaka, aka the Japanese countryside, is the best. So in the opening sequence of My Neighbor Totoro and Spirit Away, both main characters are moving from the big city to the Japanese countryside. And the main characters in My Neighbor Totoro are very excited. They get a huge house, they get like a huge bath, and they are all very excited about how big everything is. And Chihiro is kind of like really sad she's leaving, but her parents are in the car, like, driving through the countryside and, like, talking about how, like, different it is. And that's pretty much exactly the same ex feeling that I got. So when I first moved to Japan, I stayed in, in the city, like, in a hotel before I was moved to the countryside where I was placed. And I almost had the exact same reaction on the train because it's just, like, you see all of this gray turn into like beautiful nature greens and it's like the end of summer so you hear like the cicadas like the cicada trope in anime is where it's going me 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 that is a hundred percent reality and it's really interesting to see how everything just kind of transforms from all of this basically cityscape into the natural landscape of the countryside, which is really nice. If you've ever been to the Japanese countryside, you can actually feel like the air just being different. And it feels a lot cleaner, a lot quieter. Oh my gosh, so much quieter than the city, which one is one of the big perks. And like everything that you see is kind of like every day is kind of like beautiful in the sense of the scenery at least depending on where you're placed where I was placed it was in the middle of a bunch of rice fields so I would just get I would wake up and like to a bunch of rice fields every season and you can actually literally watch the rice grow with each season so they plant it in the spring and like little tiny little shoots come out and then the summer it gets all like long grassy and it goes swoosh 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 and then in the autumn in the fall it turns all golden and like the rustling I don't know maybe this is I'm just a country girl at heart but it it, it was it's very nice seeing just that those like it's different stages of growth um and it's so pretty depending where you are because in japan there's like th kind of like i, I want to say four or five main like area tropes so you got the coastal side where it's like very flat and like you're right by the ocean and depending on like it can be like flat or mountainous depending what part of japan you are on the coast like east coast is typically like flat depending you know, more north you northern you get northern the more north you go the more hilly it becomes i suppose and then you have just the rice fields, like nothing else. It's entirely flat, like, you know, Iowa or Ohio in the States. And then you got the Japanese mountains. And mind you, like, Japanese mountains aren't like the Appalachian Mountains or anything like that. It's very, like, hilly, what we would compare, like, to hills. But because, you know, Japan was created by volcanoes, it's very mountainous in some places. And the mountains can go very high up and very, very low. But those winding roads are very, like, that's a telltale sign you're in the mountains, and you can tell like a lot about like how they Japanese people have cultivated their land just just on base how the roads are also like paved because they kind of respect the curve they don't just like like you know drill through the mountain they kind of like go around the mountain and if they do have to go through the mountain it's very like uh, I would I wouldn't say like narrow but it's it's very supported the, like not nothing around it is like destroyed to make room for the tunnel it's just a hole through the mountain um mind you you're still destroying the mountain but it's still very pretty if you if you know what i mean and then i try to remember the one and then you have like suburbia countryside which a lot of my tokyo friends kind of make fun of me for um because i go to the city and they call it like oh this is the countryside and i'm like what do you mean there's like houses everywhere and there's like you know a train station right there and like six grocery stores you can walk to 
because I like I live out in the rice field, so I'm just kind of like, oh, this is like a nice like city life, and they're like, this isn't a city, this is like countryside. I'm like, if you say so. So my experience is very different than my friends. Um, and then I forget the last one. I want to say it's like very much in between everything. Like you have the ocean, mountains, and like suburbia area, where you can be like in the downtown of the biggest city in the countryside, but it's still very sparse. Like um, you would have access to like all the major like clubs, shopping district, even McDonald's, maybe or Starbucks if you're lucky. But like that's kind of like the downtown of the the Japanese countryside. So if you're lucky, you can be right there and walk everywhere. If you're not as lucky, um, you might still need a car, which is one of the detriments, but also a benefit of living in the countryside is that you kind of have to have a car. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, having a car in the countryside is almost a need. Like, kind of like in the States where you need a car to get everywhere. But you can you would need a car in America regardless. Like, suburbia, you need a car. But in the countryside, you can get to a car but still have accessibility to everything else. You can drive to a train station. You can drive to a bus stop, park there, and take the bus. Um you know, Japanese countryside roads are very well equipped for both cars and bicycles. So a lot of people ride their bikes. You'll see sometimes like a grandma riding her bike or like kids who often go to school on their bikes. Everything's really well, like everything's accessible, basically. A lot of the countryside buses are also like still very on time, They're very Japanese, like always on time. And sometimes they're free, if not very cheap for people who are living in the city. Um, but I would say the most inconvenient part about the bus is that if it's a city bus, like for that particular city, they typically only run like for commuters and they don't run 24 seven. If you're in a more populated one, it might run more often. It really depends on like the population though. I think that's for like most cities, but I would say like 100 yen for anywhere from point A to point B in the city is still pretty good. Um, and also like if you have any access to a highway bus that is also very good so highway highway buses are basically just the the buses that take the highway and go to like one big city to the another big city or even like in, if you're lucky you go to like train state like a big train station which is very common i would say that in northern japan there's like usually the one the one major jr line that goes nor- runs north and south <clears throat> that connects to tokyo and some buses just have like routes just to that uh, station on that line but they are very good at like being on time cleanliness and just being like kind of polite sometimes if they don't like i would say in the japanese countryside just the inaka people don't expect people to speak english unless you're like connected right outside tokyo or like a very big city that supports like foreign language i would say that everyone speaks japanese which in turns makes your japanese better very very quickly um either way like through input or output um but you need to learn how to read the schedule you need to learn how to like get around town you need to learn to add like sometimes ask questions and it's very nerve-wracking for someone who has like zero background in japanese however everyone in the japanese countryside is like super friendly well i in my experience, they're super friendly and they're always willing to help. Even if they can't get you the answer that you're looking for, they're always willing to at least stop for like a minute or so, hear you out, try to help you out and like try to point you in the right direction. I've never met anyone in the countryside who hasn't given me time to help me out if I'm lost. Um, so that's also a big perk. It's just like, people are more friendly and with the friendliness, like, especially in like local eateries so if you get like if you're in the countryside you have to find a cafe or something like akin to that like maybe a diner where you are a regular because then that gets you in on the inside of like that kind of circle group so a lot of the cafes a lot of like diner things they usually have events and then that's how you meet more people and that's usually how you grow your like social group if you go to a Starbucks, it's kind of similar, but it's not the same if you're 
it, you're going to like a regular, like a one person owned cafe, and they you see this the barista just on the espresso machine making everything yourself and trying to like, oh, I roast my beans every morning myself, only the best quality. That's that's the cafe that you want. Or if they have like a specialty, like most cafes in Japan, sometimes they'll serve like sandwiches or like tiny foods and like pasta. I think that's the most common one. Um, but some like if you can find a cafe that you can stay in there for hours without like the owner being like irritated so you can study and then you can be friends with the owner and then just expand from there you, like you can bring your other friends and have a little con like little, always like a little study group over there in the corner you know what i'm talking about but yeah that is all oh, and speaking of like local eateries i don't know if it's just me or if the area i was placed in but the local like restaurants are so much better and cheaper than any chain restaurant in the city mind you it can be get expensive but typically typically in in the countryside the higher the prices the better the quality is and it's it's mm, i don't know how to describe it I, i'm like starting to like get really hungry just thinking about it but they i think it's just because of the freshness of the food um, and just the skill that they put into it because a lot of the local areas buy local groceries. So like, oh yeah, I made this corn soup from the corn from my garden. Or like I made this like tomato pasta salad, like not pasta salad, pa pasta sauce from the tomatoes in my garden. And it's like, maybe that's it. Maybe that's, it's just fresh and stuff. It's not like preserved um, but I feel like everything's yummier in the countryside. Mind you, like, there's a lot of, like, I don't know, Michelin star restaurants in the city, but, you know, it's city pricing. I think, honestly, the, one of the big perks about living out in the countryside is everything's just cheaper. Housing, for example, is, like, really different in the city. I think it's, if I got, if I pay my current rent, which is about, I want to say, $500 equivalent, a little more or less, like, I'm trying to, like, I'm tweaking the exchange rate. It would get me about maybe smaller than in the city. I, I know that there are good deals in the city. It just really depends on where in the city that you are living. Because, like, I'm picking on the city housing for a reason, because I've seen the prices, and sometimes... The best they can do is like a 20 meter squared apartment for like $600 a month, which isn't bad. And sometimes if that's all you need, but Japan, like, I don't know if it's just every Japanese apartment, the kitchen is terrible, especially if it's single person housing. Um, you get the bigger kitchens in like more harder to access for at least foreigners, like apartments that you, cause you have to actually like try to find a place with a big kitchen if you want a big kitchen because fun fact in japan they don't have ovens because it's a fire hazard it's always if you want an oven it's going to be a, a desk like a, a tabletop appliance yeah but just keeping that in mind the apartment i had before this i paid about half the price so maybe 300 dollars a month and it was i think it was almost triple in size and I didn't, like, utilize that space very efficiently, but the amount of space you get really varies on where you are living. And mind you, a lot of people who do live in the countryside as a foreigner are probably English teachers and or uh, factory workers and or uh, translators slash, like, um, what do you call those people? Like, people who work in companies but are the, like, foreign language access person i don't want to say interpreter but like if the company is like foreign owned you know i'm trying to be like very technical with this to be very broad in it on purpose but yes it, it's how do you say it? it's very hard to access good housing when you're a foreigner in japan you, usually in my experience within the cities i've never had an issue with it being like difficult particularly difficult in the countryside. So I think it's a lot more lax. But yeah, I, I'm honestly, I think maybe they're just kind of friendlier because mm, it's 
usually through because you're being like an English teacher in my case they kind of are very lenient because it's like oh you know short-term housing is fine this is they only need the basics so we're gonna let them in plus they get all the key money and stuff I'm like yeah I guess so but yeah what else is there I think I talked about most of everything that I wanted to talk about but I guess um oh there's one thing stray cats if you like cats or even if you like dogs because oh my gosh so many people in the countryside own dogs because they have the space for it like you see people walking their little shiba inus or like tiny little terriers with their bikes sometimes and it's so cute even like the stray cat so the stray cats here are like plentiful because you know they don't have the accessibility to like neuter them and because the area is so large you know it's like you don't really know what like you don't know how to like capture every single cat so you just have like stray cats roaming about if you're lucky you'll be in like the uh the countryside and where the parks are usually are that's where they congregate um but sp- like, right around now around springtime is when the stray kittens come out and it's really cute i actually have a story about this so i was about to leave work and i heard like this meowing and the <laughs> I thought it was a student at first, and I followed the sound outside to, like, the parking lot, because I'm like, what are these kiddos up to? And it was a tiny kitten! It was a tiny little kitten underneath someone's car, and there was this guy with a, uh, with a stick and a string on it, who, who wasn't at the, like, who wasn't a faculty at the school, he was just probably from the building next door, um, tasked to go, like, trying to catch the kitten, and I I tried to, I, you know, I tried to help me not being very helpful, um, kind of blocked off the kitten on one side of the car and he was on the other side and this cat being smart went inside the engine box instead of like running out. Cause you know, I'm helping. So we, uh, I want to say, so timeline is that like basically this whole ordeal took two hours and it was during club activities so all the teachers were out and like doing club activities and the teachers who car the cat was like like basically like climbed into um she was in the middle of club when she she had to like run over and try to like help get the cat out by so mind you like this is not I I wouldn't recommend this but you know they try to like oh maybe honk the horn it'll scare it out turn on the engine like not for long but not not enough to like like cook it it's just more like to get it out that didn't work um i try to get my car jack but the car jack's only for like changing tires it wasn't like raised enough so she was like let's call the mechanic she's like the mechanic says he'll be here in an hour and 15 minutes so that was like an hour into the ordeal and soon after one of the teacher not not teacher one of the the parents of one of the students who came to talk to one of the teachers also heard the kitten and this parent was a um a what is it a vet a vet at the local uh, pet hospital and she's like i have five cats i you know like i know i know and like we're doing everything where that we can it's like one teacher's holding out like meowing noises that were like she looked up like on youtube like sounds that will definitely make a cat come out but the only thing it did was like make it meow more (laughs) and like one another teacher's like trying to hit on it trying to like some people are poking it around with a stick and nothing's happening eventually like clubs over the all the ba- like in the entirety of the baseball cl- team is like what's happening what's going on and they're like uh, half of the, the people are like i don't care i was just like oh no i can't it was really cute um but after a while we kind of like everyone just kind of went off and had to like oh we have work to do because you know we're teachers we're japanese teachers we always have work to do um so i i'm like sitting there just kind of like trying to help i'm like what about this what about that and they're like no yeah no we all tried it the um, the mom stuck around for a long time um and she actually like sh- like shimmied underneath the car for a bit trying to grab it or trying to like find it and they were all trying to like poke it not poke it like like take a, a long stick within the in, like they popped open the hood poked around trying to find it it kept running in between from like the left side behind the wheel to the right side uh behind the wheel area and what finally got it uh, got it out was that I was like, they were like, because at this point it's been like almost two hours past my like scheduled time. And they're like, just go home. Just go home. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. And I'm like, but I want to try. <laughs> so I got underneath the car. And I, it, it, at that point, it had, it was on the left side, well, on the left side. And I was underneath like the right part of the car. And I, I see it coming over. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a chance. I like just basically 
I feel bad for this, but I basically grabbed its like leg and pulled on it. And like, I didn't try to like rip it out. I was, I, I just, I just got a gr grasp of it. And then I started pulling on it and everyone was shocked. And I'm like, yeah, we got it out. And this thing was kind of mangy. It had the nose was all kind of thing. And this mom who was like fr from the vet, like the pet hospital, she was so happy. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you. You saved it. Oh no, I can't take it home with me because I already have five cats and my kids will yell at me. I'm like, I can't take it either because my apartment doesn't like cats. So these people from the, the, the same people from the, not the same people, the, Building next door people, <laughs> that's how I'm going to call them, came over and it's like, oh, you caught it. We're going to like, um, we're going to take it. But this was also like, they found, they say they heard the cat and they were calling back and they're like, if you find it, can you let us know? I want to, we want to like put it in a nice home. And so we, so then the vet lady was like, I'll take it home, clean it up and bring it back. And then the people from the building next door can come get it. I'm like, yeah, great idea. But yeah, um, that was my little aside for the, uh kitten rescue story <laughs> i forget what i was talking about oh yeah the countryside why it's so good so you get all these adventure stories in the in the japanese countryside honestly it's kind of the during uh the pandemic it was a really big um blessing in disguise because not a lot of people were very like i guess we're, basically, we were in the city. No one was like, this is, like congregating, and people who like not a lot of people who work in the countryside work in the city, so it took a long time for it to like you know, people to get sick basically. But yeah, that's another thing is just like, I guess access accessibility is very rare, which is a downside because there's a lot of perks to the countryside, but because it is out so far from the city, even from like major train stations people can't really enjoy it so a lot of these areas are dying not dying but like they are shrinking at an exponential rate there's actually a chart inside most schools that shows the population of students like dating from like i want to say like 1970s where it's like oh look at this like huge bar and then you go to like present day and it's like itty bitty like close to the bottom compared to like what it was back in the 70s and it's very telling and I guess it's one part is accessibility, but another is that people don't really see the appeal of the countryside. And I, I kind of wish it was different. And people, like, they have tourism associations for a lot of countryside cities and towns. And even the city I'm in now has the big pool of it's like, it's a surfing spot, but it's very seasonal. Like, it's a very seasonal area. Like, if you, it's, when it's beach season, this is where you go. But every other time outside of that, it struggles to, like, bring in people. So I, I just wanted to highlight a little bit more of the countryside just because a lot of people don't have any idea, like, what's out here, which is not a lot. But hiking, hiking's always great. Uh, swimming, if you're near the, you know, the ocean, beaches. Uh, typically, Japanese beaches are kind of different. You have so many people with their little tents trying to, like, you know, to protect from the sun and provide shade. Some people don't even go into the ocean part. Um, like, the people who wear swimsuits, they wear the swimsuit, but they all, like, Japanese people specifically wear shirts. And they're, like, over everything. Even in the ocean. It's, it's kind of, in my, like, it makes sense because you're trying to protect yourself from the sun. But it doesn't make sense because it's like, why are you going to wear a swimsuit if you're not going to, like, if you're going to get your clothes wet? <laughs> Because I thought the swimsuit was, you know, to, like, not get your clothes wet. But, yeah, that's, that's a different thing. I think it's just a cultural thing, honestly. Um, but, yeah, so there's a bunch of beaches that are not uh, train accessible, which I guess is a good thing because if <laughs> a lot of tourists were there, it would get really dirty really fast. But either way, uh, I guess, honestly, I want to be, like, I. it's not, I would say this, in a way that's not weird i want to be like an advocate for the countryside tourism but it's really hard to do that so i really want people to at least like be aware of it and it's to just because like we, mm, i want to say that if you have a car in japan the or you're getting your rent one i would highly recommend visiting some of these smaller towns and 
usually, if you have a car, you have access to these michi no ekis, which is like the roadside station is what they call it and on the Google Maps and stuff. And they sell like all of the local like grocers stuff. They, most of them have like food stands. A lot of it is like, it's kind of like a farmer's market where everything's really cheaply priced. Um, but because, because it has no preservative, they spoil really fast. So you have to eat them like within like a couple of days. Or they usually like have like the little mascot corner where they sell the local mascot stuff. It's where they have the events. And I I love it. It's great because like usually there's like a restaurant or multiple restaurants if it's a bigger one. Um, but they usually have some sort of like specialty store there. And it could be like wooden, uh, wooden craftsmanships because, you know, they're in the mountains. And that's where their specialty. Or it could be like. The steamed meat buns with using this particular beef or pork because that's what they grow there and i wish there were a little more places in america like that and i know there are but it's kind of like always a i guess a how do you say this a gimmick it feels like a gimmick but the japanese like countryside it's very um i don't know it's very inviting in my opinion uh but yeah, I don't really have much else to say besides, my gosh, people should uh, go here, come here more often, because it's great. And I, if if you guys want to come to the countryside, I will invite you with open arms. Um, yeah. It's always been fascinating just to see how people from the city react when they move here, because... If you're from, like, a big city like New York, there's going to be, it's going to be boring. But if you're, like, from a small town, I'm technically from a small town, live next to a big city, it, I think you'd, like, adapt pretty easily. It's not that bad, and you have, like, it's pretty much, like, more open. It's more freeing, I guess, because you're not restricted just to, to the places that where you can get access to a car. And that's something I really, really like about living out here, is that... I have access to things just by walking or by bike. And if I do have to drive, it's not too far off. And I have, like, a whole different area to, like, go to if I do drive out there. Like, I can drive an hour away, be a totally different town. And I have different, like, restaurants I access, like I can access. And it's so nice because I, I know that if I were back in my hometown, like, if I wanted to say hi to my friend, sometimes they would live 45 minutes away. But with the benefits of, like, kind of teaching English in Japan is that you kind of have, like, a built-in community where you can, like, make friends already. And, you, yeah, like, you're gonna, don't be that person that comes to Japan and just be friends with foreigners. But it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, kind of like a built-in community where you know where you can, like, go to, like, talk at least. Um, yeah. Oh. But it's, uh, yeah. Please come to the countryside. It's great. Uh, please increase the tourism here. Um, everything's cheaper. If you wanted to ever like stay at a hotel, it's way cheaper um, than the city. And even if it's just for a weekend, it's pretty nice. You might not have like a lot to do in terms of options, but you're, there's always something to do. That's all I can say. But yeah, just just think of the <laughs> just think of when. Uh, in my neighbor Totoro, when Mei and Satsuki went and was like, wow, look at all this space. Just th think of it like that. It's because it'll be more magical that way, I promise. Yeah, but yeah, thank you. Today's a short one. Um, but yeah, I, I'm i exhausted. I, I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but they, uh, the students were very rowdy this week. So my voice is kind of going. But I'll, uh, yeah, T uh, thank you. Bye, bye-bye, bye, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. So I wasn't sure if you could tell, but I just wanted to give explanation to why it kind of felt like I cut off really early. If you listen very closely, um, there's actually a slight rumbling in the background of the audio, and that is when an earthquake hit. And I wanted to wrap it up a little early just to be sure that it wasn't a serious earthquake. And um, not to make, like, let you worry, um, I wanted just to make sure everything was okay, and I will continue making these videos. And next time, I'll talk about living in Japan in dealing with earthquakes, and kind of the reality of that. 
if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask, but I will be here ne until next time. Thank you. If you listened all the way to the end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.